Okay, thank you, Rob, for that great introduction. So let's just dive right into some introductions of our own. Um, I'm Sarah Bray, and I'm our project manager. I'm Rob Nashio, user interface designer. Monica Lin, UX designer and researcher. Mike Carbone, backend developer. Song design technologist. And I'm Clay Terzik, our front-end developer. Through competitive analysis research, we found key identifiers surrounding what a social media site provides its user base, as well as the identified value of these specific sites based on public opinion. We synthesized all of these platforms into these key points. Generally speaking, these social media networks encourage users to create larger networks. There is a higher barrier for posting quality content. Content is mainly driven by trends and hashtags, and it's a space for businesses, ads, fake accounts, and bots. This created a gap for what we identify as meaningful person personal connections, which are instead more intimate connections, one-on-one -on -one interactions with your network, a space that is both private and secure, and there's a lower barrier for creating and sharing new content. So what are meaningful connections to us? As user experience designers, we always prioritize creating digital experiences that provide the most meaning for the user. This could be a matter of utility, usefulness, or enjoyment, whatever the measurement may be. But what about meaningful connections in an online space? We all personally felt that the current social media platforms don't prioritize meaningful connections. And this question would be the force that propelled our research in the following weeks. Our next step in the research process was to define who our platform is targeting and understand what they need and want. Our target market is for a wide range of people who like to share their personal content to those that are close to them. However, for this research, we targeted potential users aged from 18 to 25 on the presumption that young users are crucial to our platform success. We use a, a variety of different research methods, including screener survey, user interviews, I like, I want, what if ex ex exercise and desirability testing. The purpose of I like, I want, and what if exercise was to discuss with our users what they value and want from social media platforms. And here are our main takeaways from the exercise. Most participants' favorite aspects of social media derives from the content they see and how they see it. Many participants are drawn to platforms by being a part of communities. Participants value their free speech, but they want their content to be more heavily moderated. And lastly, participants wish many certain platforms made it easier for them to connect with others. Interviews really helped us to understand our users more. After transcribing and analyzing our user interviews, we found that the most meaningful online connections are formed around repeated engagement through anything that most closely resembles face-to-face -face interaction. From our research, we developed a thesis that states, we believe that creating a social network that prioritizes meaningful connections by giving users a platform with an increased sense of privacy and security will allow them to maintain stronger online relationships than existing platforms. Turning research into a product was a huge milestone for us. We prioritized all the features we could think of that would help build a meaningful experience, conducted early usability testing on those features, and got building. Here you can see all the feature ideas found through research, prioritized by measuring effort and impact. Hitting the high impact features were our first priority and eventually would become the main features of Pluto. And without further ado, this is Pluto. So let me highlight some of the key features that you just saw. Groups are a core aspect of the app, but it's not like a normal group chat where all members see the same people. It's essentially a filtering system that allows you to organize your connections. Each group has its own feed. So for example, you can separate your friend connections from your family connections, allowing you to easily interact with them separately when you want to. With Pluto, privacy isn't tucked away into the settings like most social media platforms. Instead, we've integrated it into every single aspect of the user experience. One way that we've done this is by allowing users to choose who can see each post that they make, whether they're sharing to a whole group or just a couple of friends. 
This ensures that everyone feels a sense of security with the content they share. While the human brain is reading something, the curvature, style of typeface, and color all play into the way in which a user interprets the content's tone and mood. When dealing with social media interface, it's important to try and maintain a clean blank slate instead of trying to create a perception within the interface, allowing for the user-driven content to speak for itself. Our design incorporates all of these ideas into one by creating an interface that is both stylish and interplanetary, as well as a blank slate for best, to best feature users' content. Written in Node.js with the Mongo database, Pluto is working off of 39 separate endpoints, each controlling a different action in a very specific way. We developed a few unique concepts to help us in making sure we could push features quickly while also making sure the code is high quality. With a privacy focus, the server also ensures each piece of data sent with every request is secure and private. One example of our privacy first design is our commenting system. If you're not friends with someone, we don't want their name visible at all on the platform. So what happens when a stranger comments on your friend's post? The back end now must prepare each comment section, ensuring that if a comment it was posted by someone you're not friends with, that poster's name is changed to a pseudonym. We want that pseudonym to be the same if they comment multiple times, but also want it to change on different posts. So we introduce dynamic name changing each time comments are loaded and sent from the server to ensure each user's privacy. Our front end is built in React Native, which allows us to share code between iOS and Android instead of writing, updating, and maintaining two totally separate code bases. It also gives us the performance and hardware access of a native app, like the camera and push notifications, but with the convenience of writing in a language we're all familiar with. Our original intent when embarking on this project was to not only design and develop a professional quality mobile app packed with fun interactions and deploy it publicly, but also to, to assess whether creating a virtual environment where users have more control over their privacy would make it easier to strengthen and maintain virtual relationships. Pluto has since accumulated over 50 active users during our beta testing, many of which have remarked that they feel more comfortable sharing personal content in Pluto than any currently existing platform. We feel this proves the potential for more intimate relationships online, which are only becoming more relevant and desired in our current state of physical isolation. We would like to give a special thank you to our advisor, Troy Finnamore, who guided us throughout this whole project, the numerous digital media faculty that helped us along the way, Rob, who put this whole show together, and last but not least, our friends and family that supported us and helped us with testing. You can find links to download our app on the Apple and Google Play Store at our website, plutosocial.io. Thanks for listening.